Hello, welcome to our Thursday conversation. Victoria and Gillian here from Money Love Immersion. We're doing something a little bit different this week. We're actually going to start sharing a little bit more about our stories and um, how Money Love Immersion came to be. And um, today, Gillian is going to, well, she's going to encourage me to tell my story. So I'm going to hand over to you, Gillian, to um, say your hellos and then we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> yes, well, hello, everyone. and. We really want to introduce ourselves better and really, I think, share the stories because then it'll, it just makes it so much easier to connect and understand why you might be feeling some similarities. Sorry, let me just start off. Um, so let's start with just, to me, the big beginning is how, Victoria, did you end up in the entrepreneur space? Because I know you you weren't always there and it's a relatively recent um change yes it, it it is so i um oh gosh 2018 end of 2018 i came into the space and i think i'd always nursed a dream of working for myself um i'd worked in the charity sector for just around 20 years sort of working my way through from frontline work right up to um leader ceo positions um, and I often had this um, urge to work for myself, but I never really knew what I could do, if I was honest, because in my head, it, it, you almost had to have a very traditional trade in order to work for yourself. You know, you had to be an accountant or be um, uh, 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 have, a, have a trade. And I was like, here I was. Um, really just very connected to people and it, coaching wasn't even a thing when I set out in my career <laughs> it really you know it was certainly wasn't a profession as such it was something that happened so um even though I'd sort of over the years decided that coaching was where I wanted to go it was it was quite difficult to kind of just almost give myself permission that it could be a thing and actually I was very naive if I'm honest because when when the moment did come that I decided it was the right chance right opportunity to go for it um Interestingly, I thought to myself, oh, well, I'll just send a little, I'll put a little post on LinkedIn and let everyone know that I'm doing coaching now. <laughs> and, um, you know, people will get in touch. And I did my little post on LinkedIn and, you know, I got some likes, but no one got in touch. And that was the sort of moment where I thought, oh, hang on. And that was when I started to realize actually how much bigger the coaching industry had become. And I just hadn't really been aware because I'd been in my little bubble. Um, so that's kind of when I came to entrepreneurship. But I was I was very good. I didn't run off. I wasn't scared. I just thought, suddenly realized, oh, OK, I've got a lot to learn here, an awful lot to learn. And honestly, it has been like the biggest personal development journey. <laughs> So had you already um, encountered coaching then before you started? Yes. So uh, but me personally, I encountered coaching probably about 10 years earlier. So when I first started out in my career, it, it wasn't really, it was probably encompassed more in leadership styles than standing alone as a something you could do. But for me, when I just returned to work after having my first son, I got invited to have some coaching sessions. Um and they were brilliant, really, really brilliant. That was the first time I'd experienced coaching for myself. But then actually what I noticed was that as I was going through the process, I was like, ah, do you know what? This is exactly what I do with my staff team. This is exactly what I've always done with people, you know, if we've been designing projects um, for street homelessness or something like that that you know it was always that sort of coaching approach that was so key to it um so yeah I had encountered it about 10 years earlier and yeah I found it really really powerful all right so take us to that moment somewhere along the line <laughs> when you realize that it's way more than just being able to coach and tell a couple of people and you realize you need to start um it's that upskilling because that's what I've, I've realized with my own journey as well is like you, you're you're so competent in this whole world that you've been in for 20 years and now mm -hmm. this is yeah because in an organization there's marketing people and money people and admin people and legal people and now suddenly it's all on you and it's like 
it becomes a bit like spaghetti like where do you start yeah it yeah. really does and I think and I think for me and this is actually probably interestingly this is this is where money first started featuring sort of not tripping me up but I started to notice that I would go out there and people would say well actually you know go and you you need to go and do this course or that course but all of these courses had a price tag attached to them and even though making the jump into entrepreneurship had happened at a good and the right time for me in some respects it had happened sooner than in my head I had planned for it to happen so I didn't have the lovely savings put to one side where I could say well for the first year I'm doing x y and z so um but but yeah so I think at the, the very start um what I noticed was that it was going to be um different to how I had anticipated you know I'd written down a list of how many people how much if they were paying me how many people I'd need to have so I had a very basic plan but it was the how do you bring people in part that I think was was where I sort of struggled um and what I did was I went and did a little bit of consultancy work as well. So I kind of went back to to the contacts I had and did little pieces of consultancy work here and there to to bolster things up. Um, but it was definitely, yeah, it was it was everything, wasn't it? You're suddenly you're you're looking at the the marketing, you're looking at your messaging because it's it's not just as simple as doing posts, is it? It's like what are you talking about? It's the other thing as well. Interestingly, is I'm very intuitive. So a lot of my coaching and my approaches, I mean, even when I did my coaching qualification, the tutor would say to me, can you tell me what, um, what uh, modality, what, what program, what did you use in that, you know, what techniques did you use in that section? And I'd be like, oh, I just did X, Y, and Z. And she's like, but yeah, they're techniques. And I'm like, are they? You know, I just, it's very intuitive. And I, and so I, so it was hard for me to sort of, just notice what my offer was I think and I think that was the biggest part of it was kind of actually understanding what my offer was um but yeah at the same time you're networking you're marketing you're trying to work yeah it's crazy <laughs> and I think um I mean I know for myself as well <clears throat> there's that the moment well it's not a moment it's a series of moments but you, um start doubting yourself because mm. all this other complexity starts taking over. So whereas you know that you're a hundred percent, two hundred percent competent in what you do and the mm. service mm. you're offering and how you can help people, and um, there's a lot of noise. And because I think we're we don't always we don't understand marketing, planning, all these other pieces, um, we start. It's like gra grabbing anything that moves, anything that looks like a little bit of security. Yes. So, uh, yeah, describe yeah. that phase because I'm I'm pretty sure. That's yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Def there's definitely been times when I have taken on pieces of work that haven't necessarily fitted. And it's been, as you say, because you sort of, uh, and I, I think that's the biggest part. I mean, we we all know there's lots of different skills to learn, but actually it's the separation from the security of employment to being self-employed, which is where kind of almost the, the, the bigger piece of work needed to be done. Um, and so, yes, it was very easy at the start to get pulled back into those consultancy things to turn around and change my offer every week because I'd be panicking, thinking, oh, my God, no one's buying, no one's buying. So I need to now change my offer, reduce my prices. Um, I would have like you know my my husband my partner he'd be really um supportive but at the same time he didn't he came from a you know corporate secure job so his advice would always be just you know reduce your prices or you know almost like this simple sort of well you just need to do it cheaper um for people and so it was so easy for my head to be turned and actually um you know, I, I think probably it was around 2019 that I started really deep diving into my own personal development because it is so noisy and my head just got so noisy with it all. Um, people telling me I needed to do marketing. I needed a different system in people flying in to do me a lead magnet. Um, you know, I, I spent a lot of money on different marketing techniques, but none of them actually delivered the results that I thought they would do because I did there was just too much chaos for me <laughs> so I needed to quieten that all down um so yeah it was kind of recognizing that you know I was now choosing to be in a very different 
place. So this was not about um, having that pay packet at the end of the month. And I had to really dig into what that meant and start helping people around me to understand that as well, um, which was, I don't think that really answers the question, but that was kind of a really big part. Yeah. Because that chaos, I think, is is where, um, I mean, in all, I'm project manager, or well, was, was, that was my, <laughs> my corporate role. But we always said, you know, you only really know how to do a project at the end of it because mm. there's just too much uncertainty. And I think with entrepreneurship, it really, we never have the budget in terms of time. We don't really know what we need because there's this experimental path. Mm. Um, we're often, um, we often don't stop soon enough going down mm. the wrong path. So I think that's, and that's, uh, I know you talked about, you then started your personal development, but um, when did the money issue start popping up? Because this is the big problem is that we run out of budget because we're yeah. not sure we spend it and we start panicking because it takes twice as long or to start signing mm. on clients. Mm. and cost money <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean the money stuff you know I can look back now the money stuff's always been there always even before I made the jump into entrepreneurship really um but it started I, I think when I first realized it was not going to be as easy as I had hoped you know in my mind I'd sat there with my little plan you know, I planned my business name. I don't know, and um, when I sort of realised that it was going to take much more to get people to to come and 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 um, work with me and experience the coaching that I deliver, that was when I suppose the voices started around. Actually, you know, you need to go back to employment. But then, of course, we had a pandemic, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> and that kind of threw things a lot as well. Because and and in some some ways that was um, it 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 changed so much really because I think you know there was a very sort of th those early days people kind of re reacted and were very sort of we don't know what's happening so it went really quiet and then people started recognizing actually I'm not going on holiday this year so I can maybe spend a bit more on myself than I would do normally um, so I will go and do this so so it kind of changed the landscape a bit I think sort of having that. Um, backdrop uh, definitely but for me the money stuff has always been there it's always been and and it was a big frustration for me so I would and I remember I've told this story before I would often be surviving client to client um, and you know from, from my big you know big packages so we're not talking sort of you know small things but people were coming in and it'd be client to client and I remember um it was during the pandemic. I had an incredible month, an incredible, incredible month. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, this is, you know, all these 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 10K months people speak of, they're, they're going to be possible for me. Um, I can see it. And I literally went from that feeling to within sort of 15 minutes being like, oh, my God, but what's going to happen in three months when that money's gone? And that was when I kind of started recognising that the money stuff was much deeper for me than perhaps it had been for I mean I'd done a lot of personal development I've worked with a lot of coaches by this point um but I still kind of hadn't hadn't resolved my money stuff at all um I, I felt better about money I did feel better but still it was in that moment where I thought oh my goodness I can't even give myself a pat on the back and a, a <laughs> you know for for having this really great month so yeah there's there's been so many twists and turns in the time I've been doing this but it was in that moment that I sort of thought this is bigger than surviving client to client there's other stuff th th there's there's other stuff going on here as well that needs a deeper dive yeah if you were to if you were to sort of think about let's say personal development and the personal development you've done um compared with say money mindset development what where how far ahead were you then or you know what were let's say great breakthroughs or accomplishments that you felt on the personal development side that you weren't seeing reflected in the money mindset side um oh my goodness was well, well so so much really um <laughs> yeah it was um I mean I was making a lot of breakthroughs around um 
self-esteem and self-worth. But interestingly, oh, I, I was making these breakthroughs, but now when I reflect back, I can sort of see that, that they weren't as big as perhaps I had seen in the moment. Um, because what I noticed was that it was very easy for me to stay stuck in this loop of um, believing I needed this support in my life so it was kind of like a lot I mean and what tends to happen we both know sorry and I'm probably not answering things here but I hope I'll bring it back but we both know that personal development never stops does it you don't ever get to a point where someone goes well done congratulations you are now fully personally developed and entirely perfect yeah. and here <laughs> you go and extend. exactly exactly it was it's always shifting and so I can understand because it's always shifting that when you work with someone there's a need to continue working with them again because there might be more stuff that you that you want to go and do but what I noticed I was doing was hanging around in these circles for much longer than I needed to be in them because there was still a part of me that whilst I was kind of ticking some boxes and moving on in terms of um my people pleasing patterns were terrible. And, you know, I'd moved on with a lot of those sorts of things as well. I was still very much like just hanging out in this world where I couldn't quite get what they were talking about, but I believed that I needed to stay there because they were, that's where I needed to be rather than thinking that there's maybe a different way. Um, so I'm not sure that really answers it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and well, I for a long time would just repeat. You know, I would I'd sign up for things. You know, I so I'd do all this personal development, and I think you know, okay, I'm a you know I'm a CEO of my business. I can, you know, I'm now feeling you know much more inspired. I know what my offer is. I've got a really distinct package. Um, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And then someone would come along, and they just um say something I'd be like oh maybe I don't know it maybe I don't know it so it's self-trust really that was the part for me that I think so I didn't ever trust myself to say no to someone so there were still these people pleasing patterns um and in some ways that's kind of tied up with with money as well really but um yeah I would always be just staying and I and kind of accepting that I didn't know the answer rather than recognizing I could do something about finding the answer. Well, I think that's a great place then to move into um, the money stories and how we, um, how we got into MLI, because <laughs> I know that we both, we both MLI was born out of learning to trust ourselves and say, mm. <laughs> everything we've been taught doesn't mm. make sense work for us so um perhaps share it will be helpful if you share some of the I don't know the money baggage you brought with you mm. that, maybe some specifics that led to that moment yeah of, like I had enoughness <clears throat> yeah yeah it was yeah it was definitely I had enough had enough so okay so my money baggage um I mean I won't go I mean obviously we we've talked about this a lot it's set in our formative years I and yeah yeah and and I'm and I'm so incredibly grateful to have been you know raised by two absolutely wonderful parents who are still here and you know they they created such a safe environment for us and and they loved us dearly um but uh, they struggled with money and mm -hmm. they struggled with money in the early years but they would <sighs> They'd struggle internally, but externally the picture was different. So it was that whole thing of, you know, you could tell there was a struggle going on. There was some pressure. There was some stress. So I would pick up on all of those things. But then if someone came along and said, oh, let me buy your lunch today, they'd be like, no, 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 no. You know, never, never receiving. So I was kind of picked up a lot of stuff in those early years. Um, my people pleasing patterns saw me kind of find that, um, and I don't know where this came from, but as I went into adulthood, I would find myself being generous, um, not to buy people um, at all, but I would just find I was a generous person. I still remember to this day being 20 and it was a lunch break from where I was working at the time. And I walked into the city centre with someone who wasn't even a friend. She was an acquaintance. I mean, we got on well. She kind of worked in the same building. Um, and she and I remember her saying how she just was really annoyed that she couldn't afford some shoes to go out at the weekend that she'd really wanted. So I just went and got them for her. 
like yeah. and I'm like why and 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 it was because I had a store card and I didn't understand I didn't understand about I had no sort of financial education so I didn't understand about the fact that I'd have to pay it back <laughs> wasn't a magic card anyway so but so as we fast forward um money had a hold on me so actually what happened was I had cycles of getting to great high points of debt and really feeling like I'd let people down and then resolving that and then the pattern starting again so there was something around for me that was kind of addicted to the debt and the worry so actually when I was setting up my business um, this is why money had a hold on me. And I worried a lot, you know, I worried and I was surviving sort of client to client. And even when I had that really good period, I still dropped into worry because for me, money equated to worry. Um, that's what it was. And so that was a pattern I definitely brought with me into my business. Um, and yeah, I really needed to work on that, but it's one of the hardest things to work on because you're worried about it <laughs> and so you know I, I'd sort of like you say it almost gets to this point where it's like I've had enough I've had enough I've been listening to people um, you know and, and the circles that you know we met in these circles I'd listen to people around uh, money manifestation I'd listen to people around money mindset I'd read so many different books um, I'd had one-to-one -one advice from people um, and I got I, I, I understood it you know, I, I was kind of, I understood the principles. I understood that, you know, it, it could be different, I, but I just couldn't implement it because, yeah, because I, I would worry, you know, you, you know, people sort of said stuff to me like, you know, well, you know, if money comes from the universe, why are you worrying about, why are you worrying about trying to find new clients? And you're like, well, but I've got to be doing something. And, and there was just so much that was kind of misaligned. I mean, I was misinterpreting it. it, it you know, I'm, it, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's uh, just the way we interpret the information, isn't it? But there was something that was frustrating me. Definitely. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know what you asked me or where I've gone to there, but. <laughs> no, that was, it was the about having had enough. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, that's really the point because what I'm, what I'm hearing as well and knowing you, I mean, you started off your business and <clears throat> thinking it would be easier than it was because you had a very basic, very basic knowledge of marketing, which is exactly how I started as well. <laughs> so like, I'm just going to put up a poster yeah, and, then yeah. <laughs> and then they'll come. <laughs> and, then, and then you get sort of caught up in the complexity of a business and often going too far and doing things that, you know, Mm. Not and, and yeah and then of course money raises its head and mm. that because the truth is that when the, the business wasn't you know your clients weren't regular there was a pandemic all those things so I mean that's that's the point we've got to in the story with with now that enoughness and listening to all the manifesting people and the thinking mm. people and so mm. on and I think that um I think what's been so apparent in, let's say, the last year is the difference of the power of choice. Because when you talk about your your cycle buying the shoes, you probably didn't think about it at all. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. a, a habit. Whereas now there's there's choice involved. So so now let's get to the the MLI stuff. Mm. What's what's different since we started doing this work in a different way? Oh gosh. So much, so much is different. And it it's given me, um, I mean, th th there's, so, I think there's so many different aspects to MLI, and we probably don't talk about it enough, really. But um, it's given me a whole new confidence in my, my business and, and my abilities as well. It's really helped me to um, just understand just how good my offer is and 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 it's interesting because as I say I've moved in those circles for a long time and I've coached people around self-esteem but I think this stuff is so foundational for entrepreneurs that actually it would have been wonderful had I been able to do done this four or five years ago um because it would have just given me the confidence to recognize that I have got choice in this relationship it was always a relationship for me money 
where it happened to me and so to suddenly start recognizing that actually no this is this is something that we can we can work on together and this is how I want things to look and it has just shifted so much and it would enable me and it gives me the confidence to to kind of know where I'm going with it and so for instance I don't know when I look back it was very easy a few years ago someone would come to me and go you need x y and z you need x y and z in your business um otherwise people are going to think you're not very professional um and they you know that that the customer journey won't be that good and all these things and it's like oh okay okay yes yes you know here take my money set up these systems for me the truth is my clients want to work with me so they don't mind if a letter comes out and it's got a typo in it and they don't mind if you know but but i didn't have the confidence and it was partly because um, I wasn't trusting myself. And I think that's what's so wonderful about the MLI program. It is about your relationship with money. It is about what's here. And it is about starting from where you are. And I think that was the this distinction with, with so many of the other programs we were doing. It was always starting off from that aspirational point of where you want to be. And actually, for me and whether it's the way my brain works or whether it's just the experiences I've had that's hard to do when you worry about things or you know think things come up so it as an approach it just felt so peaceful I mean as we were writing it it felt wow it felt really really peaceful to kind of finally be getting this 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 thing that it you know it isn't happening to me and yeah and and I yeah it was just a very very interesting approach that I mean we you know we wrote it together and and it came out of a as you say we've I've had enough I want to change this I want to stop these patterns um so it came out of all of that but um we had so much knowledge didn't we that's what I mean we had so so much um like we'd read hundreds of books, listened to different speakers, been in different programs, um, but still just there was not a connection. There was something missing, wasn't there? That's the best way we can describe it. It was something missing for us. Um, yeah. Yeah. And before we dig into that, I mean, because I think that's a great place to wrap up, but I just want to highlight some of the key words you've said. And I think this is where people often don't um, think about that with money. When, when you hear people talk about money, it's like manifest it, visualize it, receive it, describe it, be clear of what you want. But you've mentioned self-trust, confidence, and choice, which mm. is just a far more powerful place to mm. operate from. Because mm. it's because yeah, some, sometimes, and I mean, I, I think a lot of people, certainly the people in our circles, who don't get it who the manifesting isn't working and the mind power isn't working and mm. um because you kind of you, you almost feel like okay well I must now imagine this thing and be clear on this thing and repeat these words I'm gonna have 10k months or 100k months or I don't know mm. 1k whatever, whatever it is you're doing um but then you kind of get on with your day Mm. and nothing else changes um whereas mm. we know is that I mean you actually can't just sit on the couch and well not in my experience the people I know <laughs> and money just lands in your lap mm. um mm. magic does happen yeah but hard work and it, going out yeah. and opening some doors and mm. so on mm. so I think that's uh, I think that's really interesting that yeah Trust, confidence, and choice are words that you say quite a bit, and I think that that's often must in the the yeah, mindset. Absolutely, absolutely, it is. It's it's um yeah. It, there's so much, isn't there? There's so much baggage, so much that we carry, um, mm -hmm. and we need to look at that. But we also just need to to be aware of where people are right now, because mm -hmm. yeah, saying to somebody, you know, just go and think positively, go and, you know, visualize yourself with, you know, on the beach with that million pounds in the bank. Mm -hmm. If their reality is that, but do you know what? I, I know that, <laughs> I, I know that, you know, that there's, there's someone likely to knock at the door today to ask for some money back. It, how do they do that? 
How do yeah. they just go? I'm sorry. You know, it, it's it's just so. And it breeds um, irresponsible behavior because mm. I've witnessed it. I've participated and I've witnessed it. It's like exactly that. Well, if you want to feel what it's like to just spend the day on the beach, then a person might just bunk work and spend a day on the beach, which is not really what the person was meaning. Mm. But mm. a desperate person thinks, well, mm. this is how I'm going to like, you know, mm. live mm. that being. But actually, mm. that's not the responsible choice or the trusting mm. choice. The trusting choice would be, I know I'll get my day on the beach and can happen on Sunday mm. and stuff or whatever but it's that sort of I mean we've seen it people buying a fancy watch when on credit when and those sort of things and I think that's really I think that's the perfect place to end is on well take take a couple of minutes to describe to me the absolute defining feature that is different from the money love immersion method we teach is that we show people how yeah absolutely <laughs> how it's to that a bit because that's I think um yeah both of our experience over the years of setting up our business was that not enough people get into the nitty-gritty detail which is really what we need to know yeah it, it really is and I think you know again sort of just it, the how is so important and 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 the reason it is important is because we're all you know driven by our passions aren't we we all have you know we're often told you know you need to to value money you know money needs to be in your values as entrepreneurs and 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 I get that because you know it it does but we need to understand actually how it supports us more don't we that you know we to suddenly sort of say to someone actually you need to you know suddenly put money up here and start valuing it and all the rest of it but actually we just need to understand what it means to us and that's the thing isn't it it's so the the money love immersion program is just so beautiful because it's about whoever's doing it it's about their journey where they are um you know we often say don't we that some people you know we say it's between 10 minutes and 30 minutes a day on the on the different activities people do um and the 10 minutes that you might spend on an exercise could be a day I spend half an hour on it and vice versa it's just it just it hits people it's it's just such a fascinating journey isn't it that we take people through and you know everyone has different insights and different places they need to do a bit more work but it kind of just helps to um yeah it's just it just helps us to develop this beautiful relationship with money rather than thinking of it as something that we have to to get or um have to have um Mm -hmm. yeah it's just a really much more as you know I think I've said peaceful before but it's a much more peaceful approach um to I think as well um neutralizing a lot of the fear and the worries that people have and it's not all about fear and worry as well I mean sometimes you know and we've seen in the program it's about you know getting to a certain point and not being able to get past it and you can worry if you're in the habit of worrying about money you're going to worry if you've got nothing in the bank two thousand pounds in the bank or fifty thousand pounds in the bank you're just going to still worry about money aren't you and that might be that you're too scared to invest it or whatever else it is but it is just such a, a a lovely program to help people with the how, isn't it? To how how can they start valuing money? How can they start noticing it differently? Um, it's all well and good being told we need to do these things, but how how that's what we need, yeah. And I think I mean I was also um, thinking about it is that um, you know after when, when did you say twenty eighteen? So quite a few years, sort of going on this journey and all this personal development and figuring things out and adopting things and then realizing, oh, that doesn't fit, mm. is that we actually, um, we want to know how, <laughs> we want to know what's in the box. Mm. We don't, mm. And this, I, I think this is, uh, for me, that's what's worked really well with this program um, as well. Well, this method that we figured out was, was getting this process and getting this how so that if you fall down, you know how to get up again. It's not going to, it's not a lotto ticket. It's not no. going to, it's not going to give you, you know, you're not going to wake up in the morning with a big surprise of all that money. You can, because mm. you know, you're worrying about it, but because of the work you do and your own mindset. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not absolutely. on its own. It's not the, it's not a, um, an envelope 
with the sequin of art in it. Mm-hmm. But it is a kind of key to letting that stuff not stand in the way. And I think, yeah, if you're feeling peaceful, trusting, confident, mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a pretty amazing place to be. It absolutely is. It absolutely money. is. Yeah. 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 It absolutely is. It really is. Well, thank you. I've I've enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> Trip down memory lane. Yeah. Getting a little bit more. Yeah, I think it's really useful to share the the speed bumps mm. and the um and how you get to that point of having had enough because I think lots of people do get to that point and keep going back to the old things instead of Mm. realizing you know what Mm. Mm. if it's not working maybe it's not me yeah (laughs) something different yeah yeah absolutely absolutely no it it, it, that's so true (laughs) brilliant (laughs) well are we wrapping up there then yes I think that's a great place to wrap up. Well, thank you so much, Victoria, for sharing. And I hope everyone enjoyed Yeah, a bit of Victoria's journey and information on the MLI method. And yeah, I think it was great. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.